Welcome everyone. Hope you are doing well. Hope you had a great day since last time we spoke. Also, I hope the grammar workshop that we did earlier this week was helpful for you. Uh, we tried to stay not very technical, but give you some of the main rules. It's not all the rules of grammar. Um, some of them have exceptions to the rules, etc. like we've seen. But for the most part, those are some solid rules that will be very helpful in basic writing. As long as you try to write clearly, you're going to turn out with some really good writing by following those rules. If anyone has any other questions about grammar, please feel free to send them over and I will do my best to help you out. This week, we're gonna talk about proposals and listings. So when you think about proposals and listings, in general, when you think about persuasive writing, you're thinking about an, an advertisement. How do you get someone on board with what you want? And we spoke about, you have to have a hook, you have to get someone's attention, you have to retain the person's interest, create or foster their desire to want to do something and then call them to action. For many years, I was a graphic designer. This was one of the main points of graphic design. You wanted a flyer that someone could look at and in one second without reading it, because you only get one second, the person's only gonna glance through it. They're not spending a lot of time looking at what you've done. So one of the key points of graphic designing was always to make flyers or advertisements that had some reason to catch people's attention. If it would catch someone's attention, then they would look at it again. Especially in the world that we live in now where um, everyone is competing for your attention and for everyone's attention. You want to really write something or you want to really present something that catches people's eye. And if it does, then they'll look back at it again and they'll, they'll give you a few more seconds of their time. And you have to earn their time. You'll have their time for as long as you're interesting. You'll have their time for as long as your writing is clear and easy to understand. The moment it's no longer easy to understand, the mo moment it's not something that is interesting or exciting, you'll lose them. You see this also, it's interesting. I think uh, Times Square, I, I saw a picture recently of Times Square like 100 years ago with no signs. And now every inch of Times Square competes for your attention. And every sign tries to be more interesting and more compelling and more of a hook, more of a reason for you to look at it. And then once they get you looking, they wanna keep you looking. So they'll change it up and they'll say, hey, this is interesting. And then there'll be some kind of call to action. It'll be come to our store, uh, shop our brand, buy our product online, et cetera. Think about our product all the time. That's really what you want to do as well. Let's jump right in. So when you write an advertisement, a proposal, a listing, a classified, whether it's about yourself or a product, you want to write to your ideal customer. One of the big mistakes people make is that they write to too broad of a spectrum they say, oh, I'm going to sell my, uh, my product, my, my, my barbecue grill, my microphone, my uh, camera, whatever it is that I'm selling, or myself, if I'm trying to uh, get a job, I'm writing a listing to get a job. Who do I want to target? And on one hand, there's a thought that says, maybe I want to write something that's interesting to everyone. But then you have the issue with the pickle jar. When you have too many fingers into the pickle jar, the hand 
can't get out and uh, you can't get any pickles out. You need to be able to focus on one pickle, stick your finger in, two fingers in, pick out that one pickle with like uh, precision. The same way you're doing it over here, right? Look at this picture. This is a picture of a prism. A prism refracts light. But look at the kind of light a prism refracts. It's all over the place. It's very pretty. It might be well crafted, but it's all over the place. When you try to attract everyone, you get much of nothing. They say a camel is a horse built by a committee. Right? Every different group says they want this, they want that. And you come out with a camel with multiple humps on its back. What you want is more of a laser. A laser is very pinpointed. It's very focused. And because it's so strong, it's not the light's not refracted and shining everywhere. The light is able to cut through a piece of steel. And that's your goal. When you write something, you want to write something that'll cut through a piece of steel. So your first thought is, who is that one ideal customer? What is that segment? What do they want? What would get them in the door? You're constantly asking yourself those kinds of questions. How do I limit what I am asking, who I'm talking to, to a much smaller segment of, the, of society so that I can write something that's meaningful to them? We'll practice this in a moment. By the way, here was a funny ad that I saw I thought was interesting. Um, recruitment coordinator. You will assist the day to you will assist in the day-to-day -day day -to -day ruining of the team. So it's important to double check your your uh, double check your 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 writing for spelling mistakes. A spelling mistake like this might be funny. Um, but doesn't make you come across as professional. It's actually funny. I I, um, I mentioned before that I used to do graphic designing, and I remember a friend of mine who was a shliach in England. I was making a, a flyer for him, and he wanted he he gave me the text. and And typically, what happens is when people give text to the graphic designer, they overload it with junk. It's filled with information. Um, extra words all over the place. And the more words it has and the more junk it is, the less chance you have of catching people for those two seconds. I thought it would be funny to write on the ad. He wanted to write kids free for the program. I thought it would have been funny to write free kids. Um, and obviously you're not giving away any free kids, but the Shlia happens to have a whole, a whole bunch of kids, and, and um, I thought there was a better chance that people in his community would uh, laugh at it and it would catch their attention. People would talk about it. Um, we didn't end up doing it because he didn't agree, but we ended up putting in a, a character that was popular some kind of uh from television or magazine or books or something like that something that was interesting to that crowd his community was into the, that that particular um character and it ended up catching a lot of people's attention so you see that often that they try to find funny ways to drag your attention the famous got milk advertisement with extra milk on the uh, person's lips. You know, this is a kind of thing that doesn't have a lot of words, but you catches your attention very quickly. And I invite you to look through magazines and different things. You'll notice that in professional magazines, unlike, um, you know, my, my wife buys the Ami magazine. And uh, where I grew up in Montreal, there was a magazine called the High Mission News Flash. And I always love looking through all the advertisements to see 
which advertisements seem to be effective and which ones seem ridiculous. And you'll see a lot of these non-professional advertisements have tons of words and lots of information and pictures all over the place. But when Lexus advertises, they just have a picture, a cool picture of their car, and then a few small words below. You know, when Rolex advertises, they have an enticing picture of their watch and some kind of catchphrase. So more is not necessarily better. So here's three steps that you want to think about when you're writing a proposal or a listing. The hook, the story, and the offer. Well, let's go through each one of those. If at any point you have any questions, please let me know. The hook. So in your headline, you want to begin with some kind of action word, create curiosity, ask a question, make a, start, a startling statement, ask for the reader's opinion, right? Anything that gets the person in. Uh, the more controversial it is, the better chance you have getting someone in. Here's an example of that. For making money, this works like crazy. Now, you can tell this ad that you're about to see, I'm about to show you over the next three slides, a little bit cheesy. But if you saw this ad somewhere, depending on where you saw it, um, if it was in a reputable place, and even if it wasn't, it might make you stop and think for an extra second. So by the way, you could replace these words with any words. For making money, this works like crazy. You could do for buying houses, this works like crazy. For getting things done, this works like crazy. For um, losing weight, this works like crazy. For saving your marriage, for, for, for cleaning your house, this works like crazy. Simple things like that, easy to get your people's attention. Or you can ask a question. Why doesn't your diet work? Why is your business failing? Why is your list or your advertisement not, not um, making money or not getting sales? Why is your conversion rate so low? So conversion rate's an interesting thing. You're looking for a conversion rate in your ads. You know, when you write a listing or you write, write a proposal, you're looking for a conversion rate. Conversion rate means someone will read it and convert to a customer. Companies spend a lot of money on improving their conversion rate. Here's another one that you could use. The biggest mistake writers make, and you can replace the word writers with anything. The biggest mistake dieters make, the, business, business, the biggest mistake businessmen make, the biggest mistake hiring people make, the biggest mistake purchasers make, whatever it is, um, you, can re you could replace it. Or here's another one, the fastest way, the fastest way to make $500, the fastest way to lose five pounds, the fastest way to get work done, the fastest way to get the results you want. Um, these kinds of things work really well. So you're looking for catchy, um, catchy uh, phrases, everything an employer needs to know about hiring the right person. So here I chose this time, for making money, this works like crazy. And then you wanna tell a little story. Now, when I say tell a story, I'm not talking about Shmuel Kunda, you know, or, or some kind of long Megillah. I'm talking about one or two line story, something that's very quick and very precise. You might not even think of it as a story, but research shows that people are much more likely to react or the conversion rate is higher when there's some kind of story attached to it. So here's the story that I wrote. I quit my job, I now make $5,000 per week working at home. Or I quit my job and I now make $5,000 per week um, selling on Amazon. Again, a little bit cheesy, but it still makes you think, wow, $5,000 working at home. And then here's the clincher. I'm gonna make an offer and I'm gonna let you know 
Make money now with my easy system by visiting my site. I'm telling you that it's easy. I'm telling you to make money. But you see, the whole thing is very short. So you want to start with, we said, a hook, a story, and an offer. Look at this hook, story, and offer. An executive assistant available for you. You could, if you were creative, maybe come up with a better caption than executive assistant available for you. You could come up with something more creative. Uh, but if this was in a classified, I will get the job done the way you would have. Ten years experience, computer literate, resume and references available. Now, what did this person do when they wrote this this um, this uh, listing? Right? They said, "I'm going to think about who is the person that would hire." The type of person that I'm going to work for, the person type of person that I want to get hired by, is going to be a person who is looking for someone to do things well, and he won't have to worry about it. I'm looking for someone who is um, the the per, the audience that I'm targeting is an executive or a businessman who wants someone who's reliable. That's his most important thing. I know for me as a, as a, as an employer. Um, the more I have employees that are reliable and will do things well and that I can trust the way they're doing it, uh, that's a huge blessing for me. It's number one. It's so important for me. And vice versa. Um, the more I look at, I hire someone who I have to be on top of them or who I am nervous about the work they're going to do, I can't trust the work they're going to do. I'm nervous that if someone calls me, uh, that, if, that, that if a customer calls me about their work, um, I'm not going to be able to defend their work. That's the worst thing for me. And I'm not interested in, you know, that's where I start turning gray and pull my hair out. When I have people that I can't trust their, their job. So for me, if I saw this, this is great. I want someone who's going to get the job done the way I would have done it. I want to not think about it anymore. I love the fact that he has experience. I love the fact that this person is computer literate. Um, and the fact that it's able to be backed up by resume and references. So you want to ask yourself, what makes your product something that the customer or the person you're writing the ad you're targeting really wants or needs, right? Like in this last case, we said, the hiring person, the executive that's hiring, wants someone that's reliable. That's what we're focused on. In this case, we're focused on uh, someone who wants to make more money than he's making now by working at home. Um, so you really want to think about, you want to answer that question. What is the benefit? What can get that person on board? And be very specific and very targeted. And here's a mistake that people make. They use cliches. A cliche is a word that um, is so true and so effective, or it's a word or a phrase that is so good or so effective at what it does, but it's used too often, so people are tired of it, and it has no meaning. An example of that is the word literally. How often do people say... Um, he was literally going to die, right? That's not true. Uh, or he was literally the best in the whole world. Or how often do people say things like, um, uh, what are some good cliches that, that um, people say, but have that are very powerful words, but really have no more meaning uh, because you hear them too often. We often refer to these as, also superlatives. Superlatives mean when you talk about something as the best. This photo paper is the best in the whole world. It is premium. Now, these are both dollar store products. So you're standing in Family Dollar or you're standing in Dollar Tree and you're looking at this premium photo paper, right? Um, 
premium is not really what does it for you, right? It's, it, it's a word that you hear all the time, especially if you see it on junkie packaging. The, the, the word, when you say best uh, executive assistant, um, top, um, awesome, uh, you know, deluxe, these kinds of words, they don't mean anything to anyone, even though they're really good words. They don't mean anything to anyone. What will make more meaning is describing something about it that has value. So for example, if you look here on this picture, you'll see it shows that it's 48 pounds, that it dries instantly, um, that it is scrapbook safe, can't read all of them, uh, nine millimeters or, or, or no, nine, in, nine, nine inches. Um, heavyweight paper, uh, suitable for inkjet printers. Those things might be interesting to you um, if those specific qualities have value to you. But the word premium or the word ultra deluxe, right? Not only is this bottle of, of detergent deluxe, it's ultra deluxe. That's very powerful to you. Um, and it's totally awesome. So try and avoid those kinds of words in your writing. So here's an example of a company that instead of saying, here are the best deluxe, ultra deluxe shoes in the whole world, Zappos was very specific about what they wrote. They wrote, um, it captures the classic boat shoe style in a feminine design. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, then that'll talk to you. You know, the, the customer that they're making these shoes for obviously appreciates this style and design. Genuine hand-sewn construction for durable comfort. We're telling the customer that it's comfort comfortable and that it's hand-sewn. Uh, so, you know, hand-sewn speaks to the quality. Stain water resistant, um, leather upper. So these shoes are gonna last you in the rain. 360 lacing system for rust with rust proof eyelets. I guess it's, that's how the shoelace wraps all the way around the whole foot. Modern EVA cushion midsole for all day comfort underfoot. So they didn't write best shoe, most comfortable shoe in the world. They described that it has an EVA cushion in the midsole. Non-marking rubber outsoles with wave sipping for the ultimate wet dry traction. So they, they, they spent more time describing it. So descriptions are better than cliches or tags that you put. Again, using a story or a Appealing to the imagination. You can do this like what I've actually heard of, of, of doing this by thinking to yourself, imagine, and then taking out the word imagine and just writing it without the word imagine. But be the barbecue hero you were meant to be. Imagine this is a, an advertisement for a grill. Imagine that elusive, crusty, crunchy uh, sear every time without compromising on your juicy, medium, rare pink inside. Now, again, this is targeted to someone who really likes expensive meat and someone who likes doing it themselves and someone who likes uh, being the center of attention. And it's not targeted to people who don't care for medium rare steak. Uh, you know, this is, this is targeted to a foodie. You're not gonna meet a foodie who prefers their steak to be gray inside, right? At 900 degrees, this grill hits temperatures other grills can only dream of. Now, only a foodie would know that. Only someone who's into rare, medium rare pink steak would know that you need high temperatures to get an even sear without turning the inside of the steak gray. As the hero of the steakhouse, and by the way, this is interesting to read. So if you're into food and you're into this kind of thing and you see this, you're gonna to wanna to read through the rest of it. As the hero of the steakhouse quality in your own backyard, this grill will pay for itself when you no longer need to dish out hard earned money at expensive restaurants. Um, you know, and then you would have a buy now button below it. 
So you want to appeal to the imagination of the user. And it's the same thing. If you're trying to make a, a listing about yourself, about a service, you would do the same thing. You would say, how can I appeal to the imagination of the user? Any comments or questions? Maybe a little bit later, I'll ask if uh, you guys want to take a stab at writing a, a, um, a listing for a product or for an individual. And we'll see how that, and we'll, see, we'll maybe look at, if we can get a few people to write one, we can see um, what works best. Here's another thing, sensory words are really good. Sensory words, you see how they use these sensory words that say a bar of wonderful distinctions if there ever was one, crunchy, toffee, and smooth, dark chocolate. Savory flavors, it's evocative to say the least, but that's why you're drawn to it in the first place. So they're saying something that's exciting for someone who's interested. I happen to not be into chocolate or toffee, but for someone who is, this is a, it's a fun ad because it, it appeals to the person's senses. So if you can do that as well, that's interesting. And then social proof is very interesting. And we'll all know this from shopping on Amazon. If you shop on Amazon, you'll see that um, you're only going to buy products that have good reviews. And for example, I was just searching right before we got on um, as seen on TV items on Amazon. You know, you'll only buy the ones that have good reviews. You'll only buy the ones that have good reviews. And there was one, there was one product that was like, uh, what was it? Uh, something I was looking at. It had five-star reviews, but there was only 65 of them. And then there was another product that had 10,000 five-star reviews. Here's a product that um, someone picked up the other day. Um, family member of mine picked up i i think their back was hurting and and they were in the store and this said uh it was like 20 bucks and it said pain relief instant pain relief and then it said something that was interesting uh that i think really probably got the attention of the person who bought it number one brand in massage you know i don't know what that means trusted treatment for pain but see how they're trying to get the person interested in it. They say they're trying to get the person to imagine what it looks like. Pain goes beyond discomfort. It keeps you from doing the things you love. As the leaders in massage for three decades, we've perfected the art of quality tools you could use in the comfort of your own home. See, so they're trying to get you to imagine what it feels like to be there, to, to own this product, until you say to yourself, oh my gosh, how can I live without it? But customer reviews are huge. And we live in that kind of world um, where social feedback, social proof is going to be important. These shirts, Charles Tyrant shirts, they happen to be excellent shirts. But one of the only reasons why I started buying those shirts was because they have 165,000 positive reviews. One hundred and sixty-five thousand five-star reviews is pretty good, and it really makes a difference. So, if you can say, if you can appeal to some kind of objective source of verification for why you should be, I'll give you an example. I was, I had a phone call the other day. Someone called me up to join the board of an organization um, to help yeshivas. Um, improve their, their quality of their curriculum uh, and their secular studies curriculum in particular. And um, 
I was on the phone with the fellow for a few minutes. He asked me to tell me a little bit about himself. Someone had suggested that I might be a good candidate for this, to be a board member in this organization. And um, he said, tell me a little bit about yourself. So I told him, I'm the principal of a school. Um, I'm a principal of a school. I studied education. I have a degree in education. And I've, um, I have a certification in school leadership from Harvard. So saying things like that, having that kind of verifiable third party, um, and that was it. After I said that, he said, "Oh, excellent! I think you're the kind of the right person, that, the kind of person that we would need." Um, having that kind of third party verification makes it something that is easier for someone to trust and willing to to take the plunge for whatever your call to action is. And then you want to make it scan out, stand out and scannable. And this is what I said to you before about this idea that people are only going to look at something for a few seconds. So you want it to stand out. Okay, let's take a moment before we get into any business proposals. Um, how do you guys feel about trying your hand at writing something up and posting it on the chat and then we can look at it together and see uh, maybe if one or two people can do that that would be great and we could see what that looks like if we can practice getting better at writing a very short clear message for either a product that you want to sell or for a job you would like to get two or three lines, really honing in, you know, starting with that hook, telling that middle story, closing with that call to action. You think we could get someone to do that? You could just post it in the chat. Okay, the other option is that we truck on and we finish a bit early. Okay, business proposals. When we write a business proposal, you want to include a title, a cover page, a table of contents. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly in this order. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, sure, take some time. I'll put on a timer. Or just let me know when you're done and we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. How about that? Thank you, lady. Um, oh, you can only, only the panelists can see it. Oh, I see that. Oh, here we go. All panelists and attendees. Okay. Let's see if we can fix that. Yeah, you should be able to participate. When you click to who you want to send it to, click all panelists, which would be end up being me, or you can click all panelists and attendees. And if you do that, everyone will be able to see it. And then what I'm going to do is I'll copy and paste it onto a Word document and we'll look at it together. Yeah, that would be great, Yankee, if you could write one up as well.
Okay, here we go. Thank you, Levy. Let me stop this share. And let's open up a Word document. OK, here we are. Looking for a talented chef. So we would make this bold. Let's try and that's our title over there. I've opened several restaurants every year for the past 10 years. Contact one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero for ref for resume reference and a letter of recommendation from Gordon Ramsay. And Yankee also posted one. Thank you. Let's post the Yankees as well. Full time, full time, full time warehouse worker in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Needs to be work motivated. Ready to pick, pack, schlep, and clean. Okay. Let's work it. Um, Let's look at the first one first. So Levy, let's get your chat up over here so you can see what's going on. Levy, this was very creative. I like it. Thank you. Um, who is your targeted audience, Levy? So if we think over here, looking for a talented chef of open seven restaurants. So here is my question about this. I've opened several restaurants for the past 10 years, investors. Okay. So if I was looking for investors, I might write something a little bit different. I might say, that's okay. It's, it's perfect. Yankee, it's perfect. Don't worry about it. Um, so for investors, for investors, I might want to say something like this, because I might want to appeal to this. What you wrote is more for someone who um, is interested in hiring a private chef for their house or a party. OK. Um, are you. Let's think like this. Someone want to join the, the restaurant business. Would you like to join the restaurant business? Or a televised cooking show, okay. Levy, do you like cooking? Cool, me too. So you would relate to the pink steak. Um, so what I want to write over here, what can I get to, 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 to talk about more focused on investors? What does an investor want? An investor wants to make money, low risk, high return. <laughs> You're not that good of a chef. Okay. Low risk, low risk. I return investment.
invest in my next restaurant invest in my next restaurant to make a large easy profit when you say you open a new restaurant every year for 10 years um depending who you're writing that to it would or wouldn't be believable so you might want to say something like Uh, invest in my next restaurant to make a large profit, large easy profit. And I might want to say something like um, 10 years I want to talk about your restaurant network. Um, my restaurant my next branch, my next branch in my successful restaurant network to make a large profit. Um, now you want to add what you wrote there about resumes. And a refer letter of recommendation from Gordon Ramsay. So, what are your thoughts about the change that we made to the to this? Uh, invest in my next branch of my instead of successful, maybe write profit. Restaurant network. I might even take out this because it's too long. We do the work, you make the money. Okay. So take out the first line about contact info. Okay, so do you see it's there twice? In which one is it there twice? Hold on a second. Let's let's do this. Hold on a second, participants. Levy, you can unmute yourself and, and talk if you'd like. I, I, I added it so that you're able to talk. Oh, okay. Okay. But do you see how what we've done here is created a situation where we're because we're paying a lot of attention to who the uh, what he called is who the target audience is. We changed it instead of looking for a talented chef. We now say low risk, high return investment because if you're an investor, um, that's what really you're looking for. I didn't Sorry, realize, go ahead. I didn't realize you're writing the whole thing over again. That's why I thought it was twice. Oh, okay, okay. But you see, you see what we're doing over here by changing, uh, by focusing on who, who the, who I'm trying to attract. Yeah, now I see it. Okay. And I told a little bit of a story over here. You also told a little bit of a story. You've opened several restaurants. Um, no 
Okay. So that, uh, I don't know if we're going to, we should edit this one also, because I think, oh, here. Sorry, Yankee, Yankee, let's edit the one that you wrote. Um, so let's think, this person who, Yankees, for, for someone who's working in the warehouse in Brooklyn, what are we thinking about for this person? We're thinking about, do I want to put evidence of a success? Well, I wrote, the evidence that I wrote is that it's profitable, profitable restaurant network, which I think is a little bit more believable than several restaurants every year for 10 years, unless you're Wolfgang Puck and you have tons of restaurants. So that's why I switched that, just because it's a little bit less believable. And Yankee, you can talk as well. Like you would have to already be, you, you know, Gordon Ramsay has several restaurants, has, 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 you're talking about the person would have to have 30 restaurants, there are 40 restaurants. That's, that's a big number. Um, so just trying to make it a little bit more of a believable, but someone who maybe has five restaurants might post an ad like that. Okay, Yankee. Let's think, looking to hire a full-time warehouse worker in Brooklyn, New York. Needs to be motivated. Oh, I, okay, no problem. Texting is fine. Uh, looking, needs to be motivated, ready to pick, pick pack, schlep, and clean. Um, great salary. So if I'm thinking about who's going to want to read this, who's going to want to work in that kind of place, I would be thinking about probably some kind of a young guy who has energy who's looking for, okay, we could take, we could change schlep. Um, I'm looking for someone who has energy and who's looking for an honest salary. So I can write um, for my heading, great nine to five salary. for motivated worker. Okay, now I got some people's attention over here. Yeah. For motivated worker, uh, looking to hire. So let's change this to hiring just to make it short, hiring full-time warehouse worker in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and you could say, if you want to make it a little bit more into a story, if you are motivated, ready to pick, pack, um, move or store. Well, let's go back to the word schlep for a second and see if we can find an easier. Schlep is not really an English word. Uh, Stack and clean, let's say something like that. Um, we already said hours and great salary. And we would make capital J for more info. You wouldn't need the at necessarily. Okay, so not much of a change from what you did. The only thing we did was we thought about who that person is and we put a little title over here to just grab their attention and keep them in. Helpful, Yankee?
Okay, great. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do tonight is talk about proposals. And we're gonna open up the PowerPoint again. We'll be able to finish a little early as well. So in a proposal, let's actually open up a proposal, which is what I wanted to do. Um, whoops. And here is the proposal that I had, okay. Okay, a good proposal could look a little bit more uh, put together than this, but this is just the basic outline that you want. You want to have some kind of table of, con of, of contents. Um, and you see it's only seven or eight pages, doesn't have to be very long. A little bit about us, a little bit about who you are. Um, it's very important, like we said before, about the, the you know, um, I took a writing course once and the professor who gave the course started off by explaining her credentials. And she said that she works as a consultant for public and private companies to help them with um, marketing and writing. She's been doing it for 25 years and she's helped big companies like Google and Amazon and Microsoft. So by saying that, it gives her credibility. Oh, this person is worth listening to. Um, so saying a little bit about yourself in a proposal gives the reason for the investor to think it is worth uh, listening to. See here they write how their people have, and this is just a sample over here, right? Uh, advanced degree in their field, at least 10 years of experience, combined with over a hundred years of hand, hands-on problem-solving expertise behind them. So you see, you're writing something that gives you credibility. And then here's another thing that adds the credibility. These are the companies that we've done work for in the last, whoops, in the last, uh, let me just take off the fillable. This will look a little bit better if, One second. Page display show hide. Hold on, I'm gonna open this in a way that doesn't have all that blue. So it's a little bit easier to look at it. Okay, here, let's close this one. Hold on, just waiting for the file to open. It'll be a little bit easier to look at. This document, which I can actually share with you, is a fillable PDF. Okay, here you go. It's a fillable PDF that you can edit. Um, okay, so here's your cover page. You might have a logo on it. Here's your table of contents. And you see how here on this page, they added different customers that have they've helped this year. Nike, um, Acme Supplies, big companies that you would be familiar with. Um, so that gives you credibility. 
whenever you can build up credibility. And by the way, something to think about, which is very important, especially it's not just part of business writing, but it's the concept of building your resume. Next, next week, when we talk about resumes, um, I'll show you how different things you do over the years adds value to who you are and how believable you are. And the more you could add these little nuggets into your resume, the more helpful it is. And then you would have a project summary. Here you would write a little bit about what the project is that you're proposing and what the issue is and what you're solving, a timeline and the cost, what it would cost the investor, any kinds of terms and conditions and a document that they could sign. Um, and again, your whole focus is going to be on writing it in a way that is focused on what do they want? Who am I writing it to? What are they? What would they be most interested in? What questions would they have that I can answer? That's your goal, is to try and think inside their head. The more you can do that, the more successful you'll be. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. That's the end of what we have to share for tonight. We look forward to meeting you next week when we talk about... Um, resumes, let me just double check what it says on the flyer so we know where we're holding. I believe next week is resumes. Yes, next week is resumes and then regular business transactional writing. Um, and if you want, we can also do cover letters, which we started a little bit in the first week, but we can continue if you'd like. Okay. Have a great night, everyone. You're very welcome. Thank you for your participation. It's very helpful. I hope this information is helpful.